Finnish long range patrols and amphetamines. Finland took part in three wars during World War II. In 1939, the Soviet Union attacked them and they fought a hard winter war until the early 1940s, when they had to sign a peace treaty, surrendering a large part of their country. In 1941, they joined the Germans and attacked the Soviet Union to reclaim lost territories and then some. And they managed to keep that until 1944 when the Soviet almost crushed them under superior numbers. So they had to sign a peace treaty. In the peace treaty they had to evict the German troops from Finland. So the third part of the war happened between 1944 and 45 between Finland and Germany. During most of those wars, if not all of them, they used long-range patrols that were between 14 men up to 100 men. And they acted behind the enemy lines, disrupting enemy supply lines, communications and gathered information. During the continuation war, which happened between 41 and 44, uh, the warfare turned static and the long-range patrols was a good way to interdict the enemy. However, those missions were long, very stressful, and to keep going, a wonderful drug called pervitin, uh, amphetamine produced in Germany. Now, uh, taking pervitin could uh, keep you going, but it also had some side effects. It could cause hallucinations, increased heart rate, blurred vision, lack of appetite, and so on. There is the now famous story of Aimo Koivunen, who on a long-range ski patrol in 1944 were surrounded by Soviet forces, but they managed to escape. He carried the whole supply of pervitin for the patrol, and during their escape he by mistake took not one pill as intended, but all 30 pills. He had hallucinations, got separated from his patrol, found himself alone the next day, kept uh, skiing while hallucinating. He would later wind up uh, stepping on a landmine, then having to wait for one week before he was rescued. When he got to hospital, he weighed 43 kilos and had a heart rate of 200. There are other stories like patrols arranging uh, ski competitions. Or one person suddenly stopping swearing and asking why the hell they have to ski when they can take a taxi instead. Others would see a house with dancing women and say we could go there. And all this happening behind enemy lines. In other cases, Pervitin actually saved the soldiers for the simple fact that they could go farther and longer and eat less because they had the pill. An example is, on the 11th of July 1942, a small long-range patrol, four men led by Captain Mauri Hartikainen, went out to monitor enemy airfields. The patrol would last 56 days and they would cover some 500 kilometers. The air supply that was supposed to supply them did not work as expected and for the last 200 kilometers they did not have any real food. All the time they had to fight the enemy and keep moving. They managed to kill two deers at some point. They made it back, not in small part because of pervitin and the ability to keep going, even when the body really doesn't want to anymore. And they used it especially in contact with the enemy. As soon as they got back to friendly lines, they however had to spend two weeks in hospital because they were so run down. And everyone in this patrol, after they got out of hospital, requested not to be sent out on long-range patrols anymore. The Germans, who had introduced pervitin for their soldiers and used it in the beginning of the war, would later try to limit it. It was always available, but they tried to limit it, as the side effects would show themselves. So it's uh, good for a soldier to feel invincible, but it's rather not so good when they start hallucinating or get withdrawal symptoms. Pervitin was used for most of the war. 
in Finland, especially for long range patrols, but uh, it was available after the war also. So this is the story how Finnish forces used methamphetamines to keep going for long range patrols during World War II.